Hey everybody, Spence from 45 Drives again with another Tuesday Tech Tip. And today we're going to be talking about clustering with Proxmox. So, we talked, uh, last video I was in, about single servers with Proxmox, uh, specifically our Houston UI with Proxmox. Um, but of course, there's other ways to deploy Proxmox, and kind of the main way to deploy virtualized environments in general is to cluster those virtualized environments to provide high availability and, and things of that nature. So today, we're basically going to be covering what it looks like to cluster a couple Proxmox nodes together. Uh, we'll give it some storage from one of our uh, Ceph clusters that we have internally here as well. And then we'll see what failing over VMs look like and all of that stuff. And we'll also have a quick little tour of the server lab, uh, just kind of show how a node fails and then what that looks like on the Proxmox side of things. So with that in mind, we'll pop over to my little screen here and get started with the installing of our Proxmox cluster. All right, so a, a quick tour of the environment I have here. So it's just three Proxmox nodes all running on Q30s down in our server room. Uh, so I got test Prox 1, test Prox 2, and 3. Uh, creating clusters in Proxmox is really easy. It's all done through the UI, which is kind of unique in a lot of uh, clustered environments. Uh, so I'll go ahead and give this cluster a name. So we'll just call it test Prox cluster. Once I click Create there, it'll start the actual creation process of the cluster. So that's setting up things like the, the PVE daemon and, and things of that nature, as well as CaroSync. Uh, that shouldn't take uh, too long. And once that's finished, we'll actually start uh, adding in nodes to this cluster. Uh, so you can see it's finished here. If we click Join Information, we'll actually get all the information we need uh, to join our cluster. Um, so it's basically a big string of information. Uh, but if we click Join Cluster on another node and copy that string in, uh, it'll populate out all of the relevant information. All we need to do is provide a root password. Once we do that, we click Join Cluster, and just like that, we're already joining into a cluster. Uh, joining tends to take a bit longer than actually creating, so we'll uh, skip through this part to avoid random small talk. All right, so you can see we are now joined up to our cluster. Uh, so we now have a two-node cluster, so we'll bring our third node in as well. Again, exact same process. All we need to do is take that uh, big string of information from our main node and paste that into this third node now. Um, once that's pasted in, again, give it a root password. And from there, it'll start joining the cluster, and then we'll have a, a proper, highly available three-node cluster. Uh, because, of course, two-node clusters are, are fine, um, but in order to have true high availability, you really need that third node uh, for like quorum purposes, and also just generally uh, the safer infrastructure to have. Uh, so once this third node gets joined up, which, again, will take a little bit, we'll, uh, we'll hop back in and start setting up our uh, HA groups. And we can see we are now joined in with that third node. Uh, so that's great. We have three nodes in a cluster now, but in order for them to be uh, truly highly available and to uh, automatically fail over nodes, we'll have to join them into uh, what Proxmox calls a HA group. Uh, so all we need to do for that is go into the data center level uh, of our Proxmox uh, UI here. Go to HA, click Groups, click Create, give it a, a name. I'll just call this one HA group. And then select all of the nodes that are actually going to make up that HA group. So in this case, node 1, 2, and 3. Give it a comment if you want to as well. Uh, just kind of a... Uh, informational bit to know what this HA group is actually for. Um, once that HA group's created, though, we can start making VMs on this Proxmox cluster and see them automatically fail over. Um, of course, we need one more step in order to complete this, which is actually providing storage to this Proxmox cluster. Of course, in order to have a highly available Proxmox cluster, we need highly available storage. Uh, so with that in mind, we'll hop over into mounting RBDs into Proxmox. All right, so we're in our second uh, bit of this video here, which is just setting up RBD uh, to be used with uh, Proxmox. So we can see I have our uh, CephConf and Keyring uh, set up on all of our nodes here. Um, all we really need to do for this process is basically move our CephConf and our Keyring into this uh, PVE priv Ceph directory. Um, the only thing to keep in mind here, the only kind of gotcha, uh, is that you need to rename these files to be the name of your actual RBD pool. Uh, so CephConf becomes rbd.conf, ceph.client.admin.keyring becomes rbd.keyring. Once that's done, though, uh, we can go ahead and hop into our UI again and actually add these uh, RBDs in. Um, any information put into the slash PVE slash priv Ceph is going to be automatically copied over to all the other nodes, so I don't need to worry about repeating that process. You can see there, uh, they're all already in. So we'll hop into the UI, and we'll go ahead and click Add, uh, Storage, select RBD, give it an ID, so that's going to be the name. That needs to match up with that file we created, that keyring file, and give it a monitor address. So this is actually going to fail out because of a kind of strange bug we found in uh, Proxmox, specifically version 7. Version 6 doesn't have this issue, um, where for some reason it thinks there's a duplicate keyring. 
Um, all we need to do for that, though, is just remove the key ring <coughs> and then re-add the RBD. Uh, so once the key ring's removed, uh, we can see that the RBD will add, um, but it'll actually add incorrectly and that we'll have no information from that RBD. Uh, all we need to do to fix that is jump back into our command line and copy the key ring back in. Um, like I said, this is a, a unique bug that we found only in version 7 of Proxmox. 6 doesn't have this, but you can see there that the RBD information has uh, populated out now that we've gone through those extra steps. <coughs> we can now create VMs on this uh, Proxmox cluster. So I've uh, added in the Ubuntu ISO onto my nodes here. So I'll just install a quick Ubuntu VM uh, so we can start messing around with uh, HA groups and failover and things of that nature. Uh, so we'll select our RBD as our storage, give it some cores just for sake of speed. Two, gig two gigs of memory will be fine. Uh, give it a network, so on and so forth. And then we'll wait for that VM to install. Uh, we'll skip through an Ubuntu install because I'm sure no one is particularly interested in seeing how to install Ubuntu an Ubuntu VM. Uh, so we'll just skip through that. All right, we're at the end of our Ubuntu install here. Uh, so we can see now that the node is just rebooting now that it's installed uh, Ubuntu. Um, all we'll need to do now is remove the actual ISO that we use to install Ubuntu. So uh, once this node boots back up, uh, we'll just remove that so we can actually start playing with it, making templates, moving it around between our nodes. Uh, we can see here that it is booting up. Uh, so there's no issue with using our RBD as the underlying boot device. Um, we'll give it a couple seconds to boot up here as well before we start messing with it. Um, all right, so our, our VM is up and running now. Uh, we can log in. You can see we're logged in as this test user. Uh, so all we'll do is go into the hardware tab here and remove the CD drive. Uh, so that's just what I was using to actually install the ISO, and then we'll reboot the VM. Um, the reason we're doing that is that that CD drive is kind of unique to the individual Proxmox node that actually holds the ISO. Uh, so ha having it there kind of messes with your migration and your failover. Uh, so it's best practice just to remove it uh, once your VM's actually up and running and no longer needs uh, ISO to boot into. <coughs> With that in mind, though, uh, our VM is now pretty much stateless in the sense that we can migrate it around between our various nodes. Uh, so we'll just migrate this uh, test VM that I created here over onto test Proxmox 2. Um, this is done live. Uh, Proxmox does live VM migration. Um, typically, you'll have, it's not fully independent of downtime, but it's enough downtime that is pretty much imperceivable. It's like we're talking milliseconds. Um, so we can see there it's already finished migrating over to test Prox 2. Um, with no issue. But if we want this to do it automatically, we need to add it to our HA group. Uh, so we go into our HA settings again, we add a resource, select the VM, and that VM is now being managed by our HA group. Uh, so you can see that test procs 2 is now the active member that is supporting that VM. Now that was a bit of a process, right? Uh, we had to install proc, uh, Ubuntu, that took a while. We had to remove a HD drive, also took a while. So instead, Proxmox lets you kind of make templates of specific VMs. So I'm going to convert this Ubuntu VM we just made into a template. Um, can't do that when a VM's running, so we'll stop the VM and we'll make it a template. Making a VM a template basically takes uh, the instance of that VM at that time uh, and turns it into a, a multiple instance copy. So you can make multiple VMs off of this template. That allows you to make like uh, what I did here, an initial Ubuntu install with no uh, additional packages and then just kind of have a master copy, so a master image where you can stand up a bunch of more Ubuntu VMs without needing to worry about going through that whole install process again. So I'll go ahead and create a new VM off of that copy here. Uh, we'll just call it Ubuntu Mail Server. Um, of course, we can't have spaces, so we'll remove those spaces. Ubuntu Mail Server, add that in. And we can see that VM is being created and cloned now. Uh, the cool thing about this, though, is that when we actually get into the console of this VM, we're not going to be brought into the Ubuntu installer. We're just going to be brought directly into the console that we were in before. Uh, so it kind of cuts out that extra need of having uh, to install your actual ISO onto your VMs. So if you have a, a common set of tools that you tend to use, you can install those on a VM, turn it into a template, and then just keep deploying it over and over again uh, for various use cases. So we've added that uh, VM, the new one I just created off of the template, uh, into our HA group again. So now that VM is highly available, and we should be able to start unplugging some Proxmox nodes uh, and see that VM automatically fail over. So we'll get started on that now. So we're down in our lab, and this is test Prox 3. Uh, this isn't in production. It is just my test box, but hopefully no one will come yelling at us. Uh, all we're going to do is unplug our Ethernet cable. We've now lost connection, so hopefully Proxmox back in the... Uh, video lab that we were just in should have picked up that this node no longer has communication and has started some VM failover. Uh, so we'll go back and then check on that and see that it's actually occurred. So we are back into our video room and back onto our screen here. We can see that Proxmox 3, that node that we unplugged, has failed out. 
Uh, but the VM has been moved to Prox1. Uh, and we can see that it is up and running without any problems. If we go into our HA group here, though, uh, we can see that it has marked uh, Prox3 uh, as dead. And now only 1 and 2 are active. Uh, and that VM101 has been moved to Proxmox1. Uh, so we've just seen a VM live failover. Hopefully we did catch that. Pretty sure we caught it, but we'll see. Um, and with that being said, that's pretty much it for Proxmox. All right, everybody. So what we saw today, you know, just a little wrap up. We saw creating a cluster of Proxmox. We saw creating some VMs. We saw templating those VMs. We saw making some HA groups for automatic failover. We saw live migration. And of course, actual failover for when a node fails, such as if someone uh, ran down to your room and unplugged the Ethernet cable for some strange reason. Um, with that being said, though, this definitely isn't all that Proxmox can do. Uh, we haven't even talked about you know, snapshot and backup and things of that nature. Uh, but we'll talk about those more in upcoming videos. Uh, with that being said, hope everybody's safe and uh, see you next time.